In response to the Watergate scandal, Congress enacted several amendments to the Federal Election Campaign Act in 1974. First, the amended act capped contributions to federal candidates for elected office at $1,000. Second, it limited personal spending in support of candidates, also known as independent expenditures, to $1,000 per candidate per election. Lastly, the Act established the Federal Election Commission to administer and enforce these provisions and set forth a process for appointing its voting members. Under the process, the President pro tempore of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, and the President would each select two members. These members would then be confirmed by both houses of Congress. Several political parties and candidates filed a lawsuit challenging the Act's constitutionality. They argued that political contributions and expenditures were forms of political speech, and therefore the limits in the Act abridged First Amendment freedoms. The District Court upheld the legislation, and the Court of Appeals affirmed. The United States Supreme Court granted cert. There were two issues presented. First, whether the contribution and expenditure limits in the Act unconstitutionally burdened the First Amendment freedoms of expression and association, and second, whether the appointment process for the Federal Election Commission violated the Appointments Clause of Article 2, Section 2. In a per curiam decision, the Court held that political contribution limits don't violate the First Amendment, but independent expenditure limits are unconstitutional. The Court further held that the appointment process that allowed members of Congress to make appointments to the Federal Election Commission violated the Appointments Clause. To determine whether the limits on contributions and independent expenditures were unconstitutional, the court considered whether the limits restricted First Amendment freedoms of expression or association. Next, the court asked whether the abridgment of those freedoms could be justified by an important governmental interest and narrowly tailored means. With regard to the contribution limits, the court acknowledged that contributions are a form of political expression. They express support for a candidate and demonstrate affiliation with political party platforms. Nevertheless, the court recognized that preventing corruption or even the appearance of corruption was a sufficiently important governmental interest to justify the restriction. Due to the enormous costs of running for political office, candidates depend on outside contributions. This dependency creates an increased risk of donors giving large contributions in exchange for future political favors, a so-called quid pro quo. Further, the court found that the Act's contribution limits were narrowly tailored to the government's interest in preventing corruption because the Act still permitted individuals to express their political support in other ways, like volunteering. However, the cap on independent expenditures was a different story. The court explained that expenditure limits, in contrast to individual contribution limits, placed significant restraints on the freedom of expression. The court reasoned that in modern society, virtually all methods of communication require money. In addition, the court found that the governmental interest in preventing corruption failed to justify the expenditure limits. The Act banned only those expenditures that expressly advocated for the election or defeat of a candidate. These limits could easily be circumvented by dancing around express advocacy for or against a specific candidate. The court also rejected the other asserted governmental interest, equalizing the power of political voices because the government doesn't have a legitimate interest in suppressing the speech of some to amplify the speech of others. Finally, the court decided that the appointments procedure violated the Appointments Clause. The Act provided that the members of the Federal Election Commission would be appointed in part by Congress. However, the Appointments Clause states that only the President, not Congress, can appoint officers of the United States. The Commission members counted as officers of the United States because they were given enforcement authority, which is a function of the executive branch. Because the Act didn't comply with the Appointments Clause, the Court held that FEC members could only exercise traditionally legislative powers, at least until the Act was amended. Buckley v. Vallejo laid the groundwork for equating money with speech. In so doing, the decision had a fundamental impact on campaign finance laws. On First Amendment grounds, the Court restricted the government's ability to limit the amount of money spent in national elections. Political action committees, which are groups formed specifically to raise and spend funds in elections, flourished as a result.